floss tube. I'm Jennifer and this is my channel Stitching with the Waves. Welcome to everybody. It's been about two weeks since I made my last video and it is the end of January. It is just a gloomy gray overcast day here in Virginia and it's not particularly cold out there but inside the house I'm freezing you guys. So I've got my you know my big fuzzy sweatshirt on and I'm just trying to stay warm and I'm just it's I don't know why it's so cold in here but I just feel so chilly. So I thought you know what it's been two weeks let's make a video <laughs> right. Um, I have some cross stitch to share with you today. I've got some petite point. I've got some diamond painting and I have my latest craft that I am starting up with my daughter. So I'll share that with you at the end. Um, life update, not a whole lot. Everything's super busy. The kids are in tons of activities and there's just all kinds of stuff going on with schoolwork and after school activities. Um, next week, oh, next week I start physical therapy for my back. I had mentioned on Instagram that I heard it in December and I've been you know, going to the doctor and trying to figure that out. So I've got that coming up, which I'm not really excited about doing physical, ther physical therapy multiple times a week, but it needs to be done. And I also made an appointment with a specialist, got that made so I can try and figure out my other health issues going on. So I'm doing things I need to do to feel better. I really appreciate all of your comments on my last video when I said that you know I was dealing with some health issues and not feeling that great. Um, everybody had lots of well wishes for my health and I really, really appreciate those, you guys. Thank you so much. So I'm not feeling that much better yet, but I am doing the things I need to be doing so that I can start feeling better. So moving on, let's talk about cross stitch first. Super excited. If you follow me on Instagram, I'm at stitching with the waves over there as well. So if you follow me over there, I posted a picture of this. This is my major accomplishment for the week. I finally FFO'd, sorry, I'm really, woo, about to drop that, okay. How do I even get this thing centered? It's so big, I'm not used to showing big things, you guys. <laughs> I can't keep it straight. Oh my goodness, I'm terrible today. Okay, here we go. This is Quakers in France from Tempting Tangles. It was a mystery stitch along. When was that? I guess it started about this time last year and went through like September or so. And it was all charted in color, but I chose to do my own conversion so be entirely in shades of blue. So I finished stitching in September. So if you watched some of my earlier videos, I was showing this as I stitched it. You might remember it from then. It's just taken me months to get it FFO'd. I had the idea and then, uh, finishing is just not my strong point yet. So I cut, I had one large piece of sticky board, which I cut the wrong size. <laughs> and I needed two large pieces. Um, so when, when I cut the wrong size, I then it no longer, I no longer had enough, so I had to place an order and wait for more to come, and it just, uh, trying to get this thing done, I was like, oh, it's just fighting me every step of the way. But I got it finished, so I bought the wreath at either Joann's or Hobby Lobby. It's been so long, I can't remember. But it's just a faux boxwood wreath with just solid green. And then I learned how to make the bows from a tutorial on Java Girl Stitches channel. So I layered this burlap ribbon came with the lace on it and then I just used a navy blue that I found um, around Christmas time in the holiday section, I think at Michael's. The burlap one I've had for a while so I'm not sure where I got that one at. Um, and I just mount, I put batting under the stitching and mounted it um, on a piece of sticky board. I did, for the first time, do lacing. I laced this piece on. So I used the sticky part of the sticky board for the batting. Like I peeled off, if that makes sense, I peeled off the paper and on the sticky side I stuck the batting down. And then I wrapped this around and I watched, um, if you look at any of Vonna Pfeiffer, the Twisted Stitchers, recent tutorials, finishing tutorials, where she's doing like a flat fold or anything that she's mounting onto mat board, she laces rather than gluing or using sticky board. So you can find lacing tutorials on there. So I just wanted to try it out because she said that it's uh, much more forgiving 
for when you're trying to adjust, like you can adjust um, if you're not quite centered one way or the other. Um, as you're lacing, you can adjust that. And it was totally true. Obviously it took me way longer to do um, because it was my first time lacing and then lacing is just also slower than the sticky board. But I've had so much trouble with the smaller pieces that I did. I've only finished smaller pieces with sticky board or mat board and like once you've got the glue, like that's it, it's stuck, and I had so much trouble getting them straight, I decided to try the lacing, especially since this was a bigger piece. I was really worried about getting it straight, and I think it came out fantastic. I think I did a really good job of getting this one straight. I did have to do a lot of adjusting to it, um, but I was easily able to do that with the lacing. So you can watch Lana's tutorials and find um, one of the ones where she laces, and I highly recommend it. She just uses upholstery thread, and I had a... Uh, uh, What's the word, you guys? Spool. I had a spool of upholstery thread. So I figured I'd try it, right? And I love it. I probably will continue to do it um, because I think that lacing a smaller piece will go much faster. And then I just have a piece of sticky board with blue fabric, maybe blue fabric on it. I did not do batting on that one. So I stuck the two together. And then the back is not pretty, but I am going to show you because I looked around. So my finishing inspiration for putting it on a wreath, I have seen Priscilla Blaine from Priscilla and Chelsea do a lot of wreath finishes. And I kind of tried to emulate what she did. So I just got a piece of ribbon. I hot glued one end to the back of the sticky board. And then I wrapped it up over around the wreath and hot glued the other end to the sticky board as well. And I just attached the ribbon, the bow, with wire and then I've got a small piece of clear fishing wire right here and I put a command hook on my wall this goes in my laundry room I don't think I mentioned that it goes in my laundry room and I just put a command hook on the wall and then I can loop this piece of fishing wire over the command hook okay so that was a very long explanation I feel like but that's what the back looks like of the whole thing so good view of it okay you've seen that long enough but very happy with it love how it came out that was my FFO for the week. That's the only one I got done. I was hoping to FFO more things because I have such a big pile and I wanna start getting them done. But that one just took so much work. It was crazy. Okay, the dog's in, so hopefully she's gonna be quiet in here. We'll see, you might hear her. Um, we have hardwood floors, you might hear her nails walking around. Let's move on to talking about cross stitch. I've got two finishes this week, which I'm super happy about because I've really been wanting to get a lot of finishes and get a lot of my projects finished up. I love my whips finished up. And so far in 2020, I've really been able to do that. So this is Jardin Privé's Eiffel Quaker. And again, I did a color conversion to this one for shades of blue and aqua. So this is for my older daughter, Emily. It's gonna go in her room. And I changed several of the motifs to make it more personalized for her. Just love how it came out. It also stitched up super quick. And when I was at Walmart yesterday, I found the perfect little frame to put it in. So hopefully I can FFO that one really soon because I have, I already know what I'm going to do. I have some other things that I wanted to FFO this week. And when I started looking through my supplies, like I didn't have the supplies for what I was picturing in my mind. So I need to get a trip to a craft store too to like pick up some stuff. But this one, I think I've got everything I want to do. So hopefully I can get that one done real quick. Famous last words, right? When do I ever FFO anything real quick? All right, this is my second finish for January. I finished snow in February. Is that focused? Oh, it's so far away, you guys. I can hardly see it. Okay, there we go. Now it's focused. So this is from Fleurs de Lynn. It's the name of the company. She's a French designer. Uh, Rosalind Pettit or Petit. I'm not sure how you pronounce her last name. We'll go with Pettit. And she's on Instagram and then you can also, she's a, a website where she sells these patterns as PDFs. Several people have been asking uh, in the comments and I have, I try to link any pattern that I mention in the description box below. So if you're watching on a device that's not a computer, like an iPad or an iPhone, I think you go, you look at the top of the video, there's three little dots and you click on that and you can get to the description box, I think. And then if you're on a computer, or I think you also, no, the comments are there. Yeah, I think the description box is by the three little dots. And then if you're on a computer, 
you scroll, you look right below the video and there's usually a spot that says show more in gray and you click on the show more words and then it shows the whole description box there. And I try to link anything like this, especially something like this that people aren't necessarily aware of the designer or their shop so that you can find them. Because I don't think that anywhere in the US sells these patterns, but they are sold as PDFs from her website. So you can buy that there. So here is, I'm going to put on the white behind it as well. This, I stitched it on 40 count r, &R Fog Lifter Blend. And I did a color conversion. Um, I, you know, as always, wanted more blues. And then I can't remember what point this was at when I did my last video. If I already had, I did a lot of broadening on this one. Um, it took me a while to figure out how I wanted that cottage to look. It was all like tan and brown colors and I knew I wanted it to be a little more like pinks and things like that. That's kind of more of a nod to the very pink and red Valentine's Day in the US. And then I had stitched, I had the words completely stitched in in French, the, the month spelled out in French. And I just decided I didn't want to do that. I decided I did want them to be in English. So I recharted that and frogged out the French words and stitched back in the English. And the back stitching on the little house, uh, the little cottage took me quite a while to figure out too. I didn't want it to stand out so much. I didn't want it to be super obvious. So I finally got that figured out. I had trouble with the shutter colors and the door color and what to do. And I must have stitched all that stuff in there like two or three times. I think this is actually the fifth color I tried for back stitching that little cottage. So it was a lot, but I learned a lot. I do have 12 months and I am planning to do color conversions on most of them just because I want to incorporate some more blue into them. Um, so hopefully I have some lessons learned. I won't write in the words in French this time. I will go straight to putting them in in English. So that will save me a little. Um, but you know, when you're doing a color conversion, sometimes it just takes time to figure out the right colors. And sometimes you do have to frog. There's just no getting around it. You know, you try something and it's just not working and you just have to frog it out. Um, you can try your best to try and figure out in advance if the colors are going to work together and if it's going to look right. But sometimes what you see in your mind or if you're using like colored pencils on graph paper or if you're trying to use a computer program or something, you just, it's not always the same as what you get when you actually start using the threads on the fabric. And sometimes you just got to frog it and try again. All right. So that's all my finishes. Now I'm going to do my whips, which I have one whip, you guys. This is fantastic. Um, cross stitch, one cross stitch whip, and then I have one uh, petite point whip. So at one point last week, um, I think it was over the weekend, like Saturday or Sunday, I'm sitting on the couch and I'm stitching and my husband comes in and he's like, he sits down beside me and he's like, so how many projects do you have going on right now anyway? And I was able to say very innocently, just two perfect timing. So I had just finished up, you know, several other things, right? And gotten all these whips out of the way, gotten them all done. I'm like, oh, we have two whips. Like, I don't have that many, sweetie. What are you talking about? <laughs> so, ideal timing because I'm about to start a few more things. And I just, it was, I was laughing to myself inside because I was just so innocently like, I only have two. What do you mean? I seem to have a lot, <laughs> you know, it was just such perfect timing. So, all right. That was my funny story from him. I don't know if he believed me or not, but <laughs> it was the truth at the time. Um, okay, so this is Spring Sampler Banner. And I've got to say, I am loving stitching a season ahead. I am loving stitching this banner. So this is from Kristen at Sapphire Mountain Handcrafts. You can find her here on YouTube or on Instagram or on Etsy. So she sells her patterns on Etsy. You can get both PDFs like I have or paper copies now on her Etsy shop. So she stitched this all in purple and green. And of course I did my own color conversion. So my card under there. This is where I'm at. I've made so much progress on this and I'm so close to a finish. It is fantastic. I'm loving how it's turning out. Loving my color choices. I have um, what I'm going to use for FFOing it. I already know what I'm going to do. And I have the whole series. Uh, there's one for every season. So my you know, goal, one of my goals for um, 2020, I'm trying to think of the year, you guys, I'm still not used to saying 2020, 
one of my goals for 2020 is to do some of these seasonal things and to um, focus on getting finishes, getting projects done. So this is one of my pieces. Super excited about that one. Um, so I am finding that, I'll just kind of do a little bit of plans right now. I am finding that like with this piece that's bigger, it's not huge you guys at all, it, but it is a little bit larger of a piece and coming from doing a rotation and having so many different projects going on, I kind of miss working on more than one thing. So I think I am going to go ahead and start a second piece and have two cross stitch whips going all the time so I can alternate between the two of them. So I think what I'm going to start is going to be the small for the retreat I'm going to in April. I had originally thought I was going to get, there's like a finishing class being done there by Priscilla and Chelsea. And I was originally thinking we were going to get that piece to stitch in January, but I think it's going to be um, like early February until we get it. So I still have a few weeks before that comes and I haven't started my small yet because I've just been like hemming and hawing about what I want to do for so long. So I decided I really just need to commit. I need to pick something and commit and start stitching it. And hopefully I can get that small piece finished before the larger piece comes. And then when the small is done, I'll start in on the large piece. Well, I dropped my card. So give me one second because I always need that for behind everything. Whoa. All right. I'm better fingers today. So now I've lost my train of thought, you guys. Oh, um, so I, yeah, all right. So having two projects. So I think I'm going to start that. And then as I finish, like when I finish this spring, I do have Little House Needleworks spring pattern, the one that um, is a monochrome piece and it comes with the bell swell threads. I've done all of the other seasons already. Spring's the last one I have to do. So I think when I'm done this spring sampler banner, then I'll start spring from Little House Needleworks and just kind of try and always have two pieces going. And when I finish, finish one of those, I'll start another. But that way I only really have two cross stitch whips going at a time. That's my hope, but we'll see how long I stick to it. Uh, hopefully that'll give me the variety that I need though, but still allow me to keep really focusing on getting pieces finished. Okay, so I think that that covers cross stitch that I have done in the last two weeks. So let's move on to petite point. All right, put this behind there and I want to cover up this bottom one so we just focus on the finish. All right, here we go, petite point finish. So this is going to be a little tiny pillow. I gotta come closer to the camera, guys. This is not close enough, Oop, there we go. Is that focusing or is it too dark? It's really, it's dark. We've got some weird sunlight issues going on now because even though it was completely overcast when I started this video 18 minutes ago, the sun is now coming out. <laughs> so, and this table's not a good place at this time of the day if the sun is out. I thought I was gonna make it, I thought it was cloudy and overcast today and we get it done, but all right, let's just quickly wrap it up then before the sun really crosses problems. So this is also from a French designer. She has a blog and this was a freebie pattern. Um, so it's going to be a miniature pillow for my dollhouse. Uh, once I'm done with the project that's on the bottom half of the gauze, this is 40 count soap gauze, forgot to say that, then I'll cut these apart and finish them. One will be the front and one will be the back side of a little pillow. So there is my finish. It's be a little while before I get to FFO that. Oh yeah, the glare's real bad from the sun. Sorry guys, where'd the sun come from? Like it, I swear, it's completely cloudy gray day. Maybe doing a floss tube brought the sun out. Cheered everything up a little bit. All right. So it's gonna be a little while before I get to FFO that because I'm doing a second project on the bottom, which is my new start for Petite Point. So there are six of those pillow patterns, I think that she has, and they're not pillow patterns. They're just six smalls. They're 41 by 41 inch stitches, which is like the perfect size for a pillow for my dollhouse. Like it makes the perfect scale. There's six patterns, so I've done two now. And I was intending to do more. I was intending on the bottom half of this gauze to do another pillow, but just, like I said, I'm really enjoying stitching a season ahead because it's just so gloomy and gray and everything was just, 
we haven't really had any snow to speak of so it's just dead brown grass dead brown trees <laughs> dead brown leaves still hanging on the trees or floating around on the ground like everything it's just gloomy and yucky here so i wanted something with more color so i looked through all of my projects and i completely forgot to grab the magazine for this i'll put the link to where the name of the magazine where i got this in the description box i forgot to pull it out sorry i um it is from i think it's country crafts magazine from back in the 80s maybe 87 or 88 something like that so it's this little tiny mini sampler and i had originally found it um there was a bedspread across a uh, black work miniature bedspread that i saw a picture of on instagram and i tracked down the magazine that it came out of and I don't believe that it, it's not a miniatures magazine. It was just in, I think it's Cross Stitch and Country Crafters or something like that. I'll still be working on this next time I do a video. So I'll be sure to look it up so I can say it in the video, but I'll also put it in the description box um, of this video. So you can go down there and look and see if you'd like to know what it is from. But it's just got a little alphabet, a floral border, maybe some motifs at the bottom. So. It's super cute. I'm really, really enjoying stitching it. I did change out a few of the colors because I felt like the colors were super 1980s. Um, and I just wanted to update them a little bit so that it would fit well with the color scheme of the Victorian house that I have. Um, I just really, I'm really enjoying stitching it. It's fun to stitch something in color in Petite Point. It's stitching up super fast. Um, I'm surprised how fast it's stitching up. I think because it's all the colors, I'm really enjoying stitching it. And I've been working on it more than 30 minutes a day. Usually I do Petite Point for 30 minutes a day, but because I want more variety from my stitching, I've been alternating with this and my regular stitching, regular size stitching. So it's going really quickly and it kind of makes me want to do a rug. But I'm also really scared to start a rug, you guys. I mean, I could work on a rug for years. And having just finished that 12-year Garden Stars project, I'm not ready to jump into anything yet that might end up taking me another 12 years. I'm trying to keep things small for 2020. Um, all right. So that was my new start for Petite Point. And then my last update is diamond painting. So get the crinkle out of the way there. This is the cat that I am working on with my younger daughter, Caitlin. And let me see if I can get up. It's super sparkly. Oh yeah, if I go like this, you can really see all the diamonds on there. We've been working on it. Usually we do it each day after dinner for a few minutes. So it is pretty much completely covered in diamonds to up to here. She just has this part, this ear over here is done. So she really just has like this ear up over here still to finish. So we also ordered, I didn't bring them over because she hasn't totally unwrapped them yet. Um, she ordered two new patterns. One also has cats and then one with butterflies. Both of them are larger than this one just because it's been going so quickly with both of us working on it together. Um, she loves this. She loves the colors and she loves doing it. So that's been a lot of fun. All right, put that down so it stops crinkling everywhere. Um, I didn't bring Emily's over because she hasn't worked on it that much. She's got a lot more activities after school than Caitlin does and she works on it with her friends she kind of prefers i think to work on it with them i worked on it a little bit with her but um you know she's just not at home as much you know a lot of times i'll work on it in the evening with caitlin while emily is gone at one of her activities so there just hasn't been as much time for her and we haven't made as much progress so once she has some significant progress i'll share that one with you again but just wanted to keep you updated caitlin was super cute and she asked me um, she's like, when we finish the cat, will you post it on Instagram on your account? I was like, of course, you know. So keep an eye on my Instagram account. Apparently it's going to turn into a diamond painting as well over there. Um, all right. I think that was it for like our works in progress for crafting. So let's move on. I have just real quick. Last time I mentioned the Christmas gift I got. This is uh, 101 alphabets from Rosewood Manor. I completely forgot to bring the book over. So it's been around for a while and it is literally 101 alphabets. I just wanted to show it real quick in case you hadn't seen it. I've seen a few people stitching it um, and mentioning it, but one thing I wanted to mention that I didn't realize when I bought the pattern um, 
is that in here, so this is, it's 54 pages, right, for the pattern, like the pattern layout. This is how it goes. It's 54 pages long, but you can see like the pages here are not a full width and the pages down here are not a full height, right? So the pattern doesn't take up the entire page. It maybe only takes up like the top corner. So what the designer Karen did is on those particular pages, like down here, she has a bonus border pattern or over here, she has a bonus mini pattern. So there's a bunch of little extras that you get in here in addition to the 101 alphabets pattern. You get all these little bonus mini things that you can make into borders and bookmarks and key fobs, whatever you wanna make out of them. And she has a bunch of tips of things that you could use them for in here, which is really fun to like spark your imagination. And then the back, I can't show them to you because it's just the patterns, but she has three bonus patterns as well. So one called mini quilt sampler. So it's got three quilts, like hanging quilts with a floral motif and an alphabet. One's called welcome, and it's like that traditional sort of welcome sign with some motifs and floral borders around it. And then the other one is called welcome to my kitchen. So it says welcome to my kitchen, and then it has a bunch of uh, motifs and you know a pineapple and it looks like maybe like a cake. Um, different kinds of fruits and vegetables and things like that, different uh, plants and floral baskets and things like that. So I thought that was pretty cool. I didn't realize that you got not only the 101 alphabets pattern, but you got three bonus patterns and all of these small motifs and borders and things like that in there as well that you can use for other projects. So um, I highly recommend this pattern. It is 499 by 499 stitches. Definitely gonna be a 12 year project in my world. So I don't know when I'm going to start this because I've already got so many things and I'm really trying to focus on smalls for 2020, but I am super excited to just have this and, um, you know, be able to use it as a reference. I have ideas of using things in here for other things. I do want to stitch it at some point, um, but we'll see when that happens. <laughs> don't expect me to have started it for the next video. Okay. Haul time. Sorry, I had these all laid out, but they got a little... All mixed up so let me get that straightened back out all right i got my where's my oh guys i lost my white paper to hold them down so you can focus here we go i got my floss fix from fat quarter shop this is six colors of classic color works cotton this is the cornflower blue selection they are beautiful colors they are gorgeous we've got old blue jeans blue beadboard deep blue sea cloud blueberry tart and morning glory so i love those colors and i am definitely going to be using them on a big project i have planned that's going to be all blues so stay tuned for that uh the next acquisition i got um i should have mentioned this when we were talking about that diamond painting um i watched a few videos one day normally i watch floss tube on stitching but i decided one day i just typed in youtube Checking to see if the dog needed to go out. So on YouTube, I typed in diamond painting tips and tricks and watched a few videos, which was really helpful. Some of the things we kind of already figured out on our own and the other things were super helpful. So this is one of them, it's a light box. I don't know what the dog's doing over there. Okay, it's a light box. It's super thin. So you put it underneath your diamond painting and when you turn it on, it provides light underneath the painting so you can see the symbols better, which is super helpful because I'm doing this mostly after dinner. Um, it's pitch black out here by that point and my eyesight is not that great. So especially the dark colors, it's really hard for me to see the symbols and this light board just really makes it a lot easier to see. And then one of the other tips I had seen on there, it's a USB plug. So it just plugs in here and then the other end is USB. So you can plug it into whatever device or wall outlet or whatever that you have. I have this little power bank um, that you can use. It's in the bag. It's just a little you know, box that you can use to like recharge your phone and stuff like that. Um, so you can plug it into there and run it off of that. This just sits on the table and then you don't have a cord like running from the wall to your table and that sort of thing. Nobody's gonna trip on it. And that's been super helpful. I also think it might be helpful um, if I am stitching on dark fabric to set the light board on my lap and turn it on because it would provide like a nice diffuse light from underneath and it might help see the holes better. I haven't tried that yet, but I'm thinking that that might help. So that was my new diamond painting acquisition. And then 
I mentioned the new craft project at the beginning. I think I've mentioned in previous videos that my younger daughter really likes to sew. She had gone to a birthday party at this children's sewing shop and she loved sewing. So she's made a little blanket for her dolls with me. Um, what did she make with my mom? Oh, she made two pillows with my mom over Christmas break. When my mom was here visiting, we pulled out the sewing machine. She had gotten two fat quarters that she picked out at Joann's and we sewed them together and made them into a couple of pillows that she stuffed. So she just really likes, she just likes to sew straight lines on the sewing machine. She just wants to sew things. So I had heard about quilts, the quilt as you go method where you quilt fabric strips straight onto the batting. So I let her pick out. I didn't, I haven't unwrapped it. I don't, I want to let her undo the wrapping. So it's in plastic. There's a bit of a glare, but there we go. This is social butterfly from, sorry, social butterfly from Better Tax or Canvas Studio. I'm not sure which is the company. And it's all these aqua and blue and gray colors. Um, I really like this fabric back here. You can see the butterflies. A lot of the fabrics have butterflies on them. I really like the colors in this one, the aquas and blues and purples. So pretty. So we're just gonna take this, we're gonna make a quilt as you go strip quilt, just like if you watch Real Housewives of Cross Stitch. I know Priscilla and Chelsea, I think back in the beginning when they were first starting to do some quilts, they did one like this. Um, I think she's really gonna like it because it's just sewing a lot of straight lines on the machine to make all the squares. Um, so I'm super excited to work on this project with her. The fabric just came yesterday, so we haven't started yet, but hopefully this weekend we'll get a chance to make our first quilt square and I can show you next time. Um, all right, what else? Plans, obviously make a quilt, obviously keep diamond painting. Um, my FFO pile has gotten even larger than it was last time because I FFO'd one thing, but I finished three. So that, I've got to figure out that situation. Um, I'm hoping to start getting a couple of things FFO'd a week, but I just don't know how realistic that is. Um, I, it takes me a long time to figure out how I want to finish something. What do I want to put it on? What, you know, fabrics do I want to use with it? All of that stuff, like all those decisions take me a while. So hopefully as I do more, I'll get faster. But right now, I've got some work to do. So. I am going to try and get that under control. By the end of 2020, I would really like to not have a very big pile of stuff to FFO. I would like to have it done so I can have it displayed in my house. Um, I'm going to finish that spring sampler banner. I'm going to start the next spring piece. I'm going to hopefully start the small for my retreat that I'm going to before my next video. And then at some point in February, I'll start the big piece of stitching that I have to do for that. Um, and I also have in February, I also want to get the March, the monthly piece done as well. So I think that's kind of it. The one thing that I've just been debating back and forth about is Stitching Book Club, also from Sapphire Mountain Handcrafts. You can buy the pattern on Etsy. The book they're reading right now is The Three Musketeers. And I just, I have so much else going on outside of my stitching world. I'm concerned about adding a stitch along. I also really wanted to kind of do that black work stitch along from Peppermint Purple. There's a Facebook group for it. If you search on uh, Facebook for, Pepper, I think it's just called Peppermint Purple Sal. Um, it's really pretty. I would really love to do that one. But again, I'm just, I'm worried about starting anything that's like a Sal that's sending out parts and I have to keep up with it. I just, Feel like I'm not going to. Now that being said, Stitching Book Club, I think the pattern is released tomorrow. So pictures of people stitching it are going to start showing up on Instagram and we will see how long my willpower lasts after those start to show up. If I completely fall in love and just have to stitch it or if I can resist and stick to my plan and not, I just, I don't want to overextend myself. You know, I, it, I don't want stitching to be stressful. I want it to be relaxing and I don't want to have too much going on that I feel like I'm spread too thin and can't ever finish anything. So I think I'm just going to hold off for now on that. I'm, I'm really going to try to hold off on that. 
Um, if I do do it, I'm just gonna do the mini, I think. Again, I don't know, because I haven't seen the beginning of the pattern. I've seen the sneak peeks and I really like it. Oh, you guys, help me have willpower, okay? All right, we're gonna wrap this up so that I can get going with my day. Um, that moment of sunshine that we had there was apparently a fluke because it's totally back to gray and overcast now, if you didn't notice from the lighting situation settling down. Uh, all right. Um, I'm going to go walk the dog under the clouds. So I always forget to say, I'm a terrible like YouTuber. You know, my kids watch all these YouTubers and know what to say, but I always forget if you want to follow me on Instagram and see more of my stitching. You can find me over there at Stitching with the Waves. And I'll see you back here in a couple of weeks. Happy stitching, everybody.